Greetings from Temple Baptist Church. I'm Jim Gentry, a member here at Temple, and today I want to share a truth with you from the Bible. The Bible is true and reliable. It is God's Word, and therefore we can trust everything it says and teaches us. Today I want to share with you from Mark chapter 4. And there, in Mark chapter 4, we're going to see that many people hear the good news of Christ but not everyone accepts it in the same way. Only through complete acceptance of Christ will a person have a fruitful Christian life. Jesus often taught in parables. Some of these parables his disciples were able to understand, and some of the parables they weren't able to understand. Some of the parables were of normal things in life, and Jesus often would see the farmers out in the field. He would see them going out to the field in the springtime, preparing their land, getting ready to uh, plant their crop. And he knew how important it was for the farmer to make sure that the conditions were just right. And yet, the farmer could only control so much. He couldn't control the weather. He couldn't control how much sunshine, how much rain. He could only control how he prepared the ground and how he prepared the seed to be sown upon the ground. And Jesus shared this parable in order to teach the people. There in Mark chapter 4 it says that as Jesus wanted to teach them they came to the lake. And Jesus got in the boat and he commanded his men to push out into the water. And Jesus stood on the edge of the boat that day all of the people that had come to see him, to hear him, uh, to touch him, all of those people were there on the shore. And Jesus would have stood on the edge of that boat and his voice would have projected rather loudly across the water up onto the shore so that all of the people around would be able to hear. And Jesus began to speak a parable. In fact, the very first word that he came out of, that came out of his mouth was, listen. He wanted them to hear. In fact, at the end of the parable, he says, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And this parable was about a farmer. And he says that the farmer, he went out to sow seed. He said that as it happened, and the man began to sow, that some of the seed fell by the wayside. That is the path. And the birds of the air came and devoured it. And we all love birds. Farmers even love birds. But if that seed falls on a hard surface, it's not going to settle and soak into the ground. There's no way for it to take root. The birds came and it was a meal for them, but that's all that it was good for. Then he says that some of the seed, as the farmer continued to sow, fell on the stony ground. And there it didn't have much earth. So that ground was shallow, it was a little bit compacted, but more importantly, there were rocks in that ground. And as the sun would begin to rise, and now we find ourselves into June and soon July, the weather is already hot, we can begin to understand that those first several inches of the ground are going to dry out, not have much water. And so that seed that fell on that stony ground it began to take root, but there was not much root there. And so, as um, the sun began to, to shine, the plant was scorched and uh, didn't have much root, so it began to wither. Then Jesus says, as the sower continued to sow, some of the seed fell um, among the thorns. And so there were lots of weeds and you know, I, I try to take care of my yard. I don't like weeds, but it's almost impossible to keep weeds away from every part of your land. And so some of the seed fell where there were also weeds. And when it began to um, grow and come up, the weeds also grew and came up even so much that the uh, wheat that was sown in that particular place was choked out. And because it was choked out, it couldn't grow and it didn't yield any fruit whatsoever. 
And then Jesus says that as the farmer continued to sow, some of the seed fell on good soil, good ground, and it yielded a crop that was 30-fold or 60-fold or even 100-fold. How happy and excited that farmer must have been as he went out to sow, and he knew that a large portion of that seed was falling on good soil. Jesus said, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. He and his disciples, they went on, and they were doing some other things, and his disciples obviously didn't quite understand this particular parable, and they knew that Jesus had used um, other things that he had seen over the normal course of his life to uh, associate with things in the kingdom of heaven, but they didn't quite understand this. And so Jesus, a little later, turned and said to them, uh, Do you not understand this parable? And obviously, the look on their, fra on their face must have been, uh, yeah, we, we don't know exactly what you're talking about. And so Jesus began to explain this particular parable to them. And he said that the sower sows the word. The sower sows the word. Obviously, we know that a farmer sows seed. Who sows a word? The word, it says here. Just as it said uh, back in Mark chapter 2 that Jesus preached the word, which was the gospel, the good news. Well, here he's talking about the sower sowing the word. Well, who sows the word? The Christian is the one that's supposed to sow the word. Not just the pastor of the church, but every person who has faith in Jesus Christ and understands the Word of God, has God's Word that they then sow into the lives of others, their family, their friends, their acquaintances, their neighbors, people that they work with, maybe even people that they don't know very well, and most certainly people that are different from them. In fact, God says that we're all supposed to sow the word. We have a responsibility to share the gospel. And so in this particular case, as one went out to sow, some of the seed, the word of God, it says, fell upon a heart that was hard. That which was the hard ground, the path, it says, is the heart that is closed to Jesus Christ. And what happens here? It says in Mark chapter 4 and verse 15, These are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. Satan doesn't want a person to hear the gospel. And he's looking for every advantage he has. And the one that has the closed heart, he knows that he can steal away the message that was given to them concerning Jesus. They know how easy it is because that person's heart is closed. It goes on to say there in that next verse, it says, These likewise are the ones sown on stony ground who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness. And they have no root in themselves and so endure only for a time. Afterward, when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. And so you remember that the second place Jesus talked about was the stony ground, the shallow ground, the ground that has a lot of rocks, that heats up really quickly and dries out before you even know it. That's the open heart, but the hesitant heart. The one who's open to hearing but they're hesitant to put their faith in Jesus Christ. They're hesitant to trust, to believe, and even more hesitant to follow Jesus. And what happens? Well, when there is tribulation, when there's strife, when there's sickness, when there's some type of disturbance that comes up within their life, what happens? Well, they shrivel up. They fall back from what they thought that they were open to, 
and they once again turn to themselves. And in that, Satan has them. The third soil, you remember, was the thorny ground where the thorns will grow up and choke out the wheat. This is what Jesus says about that. He says, now these are the ones sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things entering in choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. These are hearts that are initially open to God's Word. They're open, possibly even searching for what God wants them to hear. But they're distracted. They're distracted by all of the things of the world. And we've got enough distractions in this world. We've got the viruses. We've got all kinds of other sicknesses. We've got all kinds of other issues in life. There are so many different issues that people have to face that distract them from what's most important. And that is that there's forgiveness that's found for the person of faith. And that forgiveness comes through faith in Jesus Christ. Look at the third, not the third, but the fourth. The fourth soil was that good soil. It was the prepared soil. Jesus said, but these are the ones sown on good soil. Those who hear the word, accept it, and bear fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. These are the hearts that are open. And when they hear the word of God, they accept it as the word of God. And accepting it as the word of God, they yield to it as the word of God. And yield to it once they yield to it, they ready themselves to follow Jesus. And they begin to follow him. And Jesus said to his first disciples, come and follow me. To some that were out fishing in the boat, he said, come and follow me. And immediately they left everything. They left all of their fishing gear. They left all of their fish. They left their boats, they left their livelihood, and they were ready to follow Jesus. God's looking for those who are ready to follow Jesus today. And the truth of the matter is, is that many people hear the good news of Christ, but not everyone accepts it in the same way. Some won't accept it at all. Some are willing to accept a little of that truth, but they're hesitant to put their faith in Jesus. Some are excited about what they hear, but they're distracted by the things of the world. And then there are others who hear, who accept, who believe, who yield their lives to Jesus and begin to follow him. That person will experience the blessings of God. The Bible tells us that the fullness of God's blessings are in Jesus Christ. The fullness of his blessings are in Jesus Christ. I trust today you would be that person that would hear, accept, and believe. And put your faith, your trust in Jesus Christ. Temple Baptist Church has services on Sunday at 8 a.m. and at 10 a.m. We welcome you to come and join us and allow God to speak to your heart. Bless you and have a wonderful day.